What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. The Los Angeles Lakers just beat the Milwaukee Bucks again without LeBron James, and the players that are considered supporting pieces around LeBron continue to deliver fantastic performances when LeBron James is not on the floor. But we all keep hearing, what we all keep hearing is how LeBron James has no help and his teammates are trash. In the last two weeks, I have heard two ex-NBA players get on their medium, get on their platforms, and say that. One being Kenyon Martin, another one being Kendrick Perkins. Kenyon Martin said this, quote, management, all of y'all are at fault for not making moves, for not getting him another score, for not getting another guy that can take some of that load off, right? Go get you an offensively, aggressively wing that you ain't got to worry about night in, night out. If he's going to get his 17 shots up, they need somebody like that, but they didn't do that. So LeBron is stuck with this load that he has to carry at 39 years old. Really? Kenyon Martin? The Lakers didn't make moves for LeBron ever since he's been there. They didn't get him another score. They didn't get him another guy that can facilitate and play make actually has two or three players that can do that pretty well. They didn't do all that. Or maybe LeBron doesn't allow them to do that. And maybe the coach wants them to do that, but is so scared to take them out of the Le system. Kendrick Perkins said this on ESPN First Take. You, you, you know what that is, Uncle? Uh? No. You know what that is? You what? know what that is, Molly? It's an old saying. You can smell doo-doo before you see it. We've been smelling doo-doo the whole season long when it comes down to the Lakers. Like, they, they sitting in a nice spot. So what are we talking about? First of all, they got to get into the postseason. That's number one. So when I'm, looking at the, when I'm looking at the Clippers, when I'm looking at the Clippers, it's a bigger deal because of the expectations. LeBron James don't even have expectations for this Lakers team. He knows that they trash. He knows that they can't make any noise. That's why you, along with LeBron, was the reason, was one of the ones at the trade deadline, include myself, saying trade. Get you another star in there. Get you a wing defender. Because we all know if they happen to get up against the Sacramento Kings, we know how the Sacramento Kings own them. We know how Sabonis owns AD in that matchup. And then if they happen to get to that next round or play against a, a Dallas Mavericks in the play-in tournament, you sure you want to go on the road and play against a Luka Doncic or a Kyrie Irving the way that they've been following? Both of these guys sound like absolute casuals right now. I have been on this channel countless of times talking about the LeBron James smoke cloud and effect. He has always been heralded as this guy that makes everybody better. But these trades often go down to appease him and players are constantly struggling playing with him and they get thrown under the bus. Oh, Rodney Hood was averaging X, Y, and Z before going over to the Cavaliers. He's going to be great with LeBron. Oh, Russell Westbrook just averaged X, Y, and Z. Did that in Washington before going over to the Lakers. Oh, Green was averaging X, Y, and Z. Oh, Isaiah Thomas Jr. was averaging X, Y, and Z before going over to Cleveland. And they get to LeBron's team, and all of a sudden they look like much lesser versions of themselves. Why is the guy that you keep telling us that makes everybody better, the guy that you keep saying can take me, you, and a cafeteria worker to the NBA Finals? Why is this guy constantly needing more help and needing trades given excuses for? One of which is the excuse that always pops up. His teammates are trash and he needs more help. Why? Explain it to me. Explain it to me. Can someone please make sense of this?
See, they will praise LeBron's 8, 9, 10 assists, whatever, and say he makes his teammates better, while the other players in the league can do the same thing and they'll get deemed as stat patterns, get deemed as high usage, ball monopolizers, when in fact that's been LeBron James his whole damn career, for the most part. Even Rajon Rondo on the Celtics, a guy that rarely shoots, legitimately pass first kind of guy. Likes to hold on to the ball, get the assists. Even his own teammates in Boston got to the point where they started rumbling about him being a ball hog. Not from a scoring perspective, but from an assist perspective. LeBron, for a large amount of his career, has been a monopolizer and ball hog in both aspects, scoring and assisting. It must go through him. Like James Harden, like Russell Westbrook, like Young, like Luka, etc. You see, the LeBron James effect is that if you are not that second player in the big three or anything less, your numbers will suffer greatly and people will forget about you, discredit you, call you trash, and you make the largest sacrifices. Even some of the role players will get torn to shreds as they go from being quality scorers, playmakers, performers from where they were before and now being regulated to being a spot-up shooter, even though it may be against their skill set. You see, the guys that LeBron James really makes better are the guys that really can't do much for themselves or for the team outside of just standing around a three-point line and waiting to shoot a three-point shot. He'll make those guys great all day as long as they're hitting. No question about that. How many times must we watch this happen? History repeats itself. And now these guys get labeled as trash and LeBron has no help. LeBron James has help. He's always had help. LeBron is just doing too much. By him doing too much, he's directly taking away from the contributions of the other players around him. And things like that can also impact how engaged other players are in other facets of the game. People on these networks won't ever say that. And the ones that believe that and want to say that won't say it because LeBron James really got people out here scared to speak the truth of what's really on their mind. People fear the repercussions of LeBron James and clutch society because of the kind of backing he gets on media networks and conduits. People know they can lose jobs and be blackballed for speaking against LeBron James, especially aggressively. We've seen it happen to a lot of people. You look at even the people that might have anti-LeBron approaches on these networks as a very soft stance. And they only take that soft approach when it comes to the Jordan debate, if they're a Jordan person. Outside of that, they are singing LeBron James' names to the high heavens. You ever wonder why a guy like Rick Buecher and Ramona Shelburne rarely get invited to these shows anymore? Oh, they're both Kobe people. And they will speak on Kobe adamantly against LeBron James. That's why they don't let them on the show that much anymore. I'm not lying when I say LeBron James got people scared out here. I was watching TNT Overtime after the game in which uh, the Lakers beat the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, uh, AD, D'Lo, Austin Reeves had incredible games without LeBron James playing. Anthony Davis had 34 points, 23 rebounds, 4 blocks, 2 steals. Rui Hachimura had 16 points, 14 rebounds. D'Lo had 29 points, 12 assists. Austin Reeves had 29 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists, triple-double. I see a whole lot of scoring and facilitating there. And these guys are constantly performing well when LeBron James is not playing or on the few occasions when he does let these guys thrive and contribute. So as I'm watching TNT Overtime post-game, you know, Candace Parker's on there. She decided to chime in. And you could see, hear the fear of speaking the truth against LeBron James. It was so evident in her statement. She was dancing around her words, taking time to think about how she was gonna deliver her message for fear of repercussion and backlash. Take a look. 
Beyond this, what do you learn about the Lakers when you watch them without LeBron? So I think that there's in a like a, a consistent how would I say this? Like Austin Reeves is front and center when LeBron is out. Like you can see that it's their game plan to put the ball in Austin Reeves' hands and to allow him to play. And I mean, he performed tonight. You look at his triple double. I mean, 29, 10, and 14. I think AD is a little bit more active. Um, and I think at times, it, you you get caught watching LeBron play because he is so great. Right. And he can do so many things with the ball. And um, and so I think that it is, an, I mean, you saw how Rui started off tonight. Real hot. With his energy and all that stuff. And if they can get Vanderbilt back healthy, I think that he, he can give them some good minutes defensively. Now tell me, she wasn't taking a step back to really process her words before she spoke on it. It is clearly evident. We all know what she wanted to say, but what would be even crazier is if she actually said what she wanted to say, what she actually said, that's what she wanted to say. But she was still so mortified about possibly misspeaking that she had to really process it and think about it before letting it out. <laughs> Sweetheart, stop running with that false narrative. That is not the case. LeBron James is taking away from the other players by doing too much. It is not them being fascinated in awe of LeBron James and just watching him. That is not the case. D'Lo wants to get his. AR wants to get his. I could promise you that. That's why I'm really happy that Paul Pierce is on uh, these major networks now talking. If you didn't know, Paul Pierce is now on Undisputed with Skip Bayless and Keyshawn Johnson. And uh, Paul Pierce is one of the guys that's not a LeBron James job sniffer. And uh, Pierce has publicly said in the past that ESPN, you know, used to force LeBron James down their throat. He didn't like that. And ESPN didn't like him talking about them like that and putting that out there. But Pierce, I've heard him say several times in the last week or two that the reason why some of these players don't produce how everyone expects them to produce is because LeBron James is doing too much. He needs to allow these guys to thrive and contribute. He literally said LeBron James needs to take a step back. He's holding back the team. Finally, somebody out here with the kahunas to speak on this and speak truthfully about it. Thank you, Paul Pierce. He is going to be a breath of fresh air on these networks. I'm not going to say I agree with everything he has to say, but he'll be honest about the LeBron James um, points and can give anybody backlash that tries to dispute against him. Anyway, that's all I got to say about it. Appreciate y'all for stepping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and catch you on the next one. We out, baby.